with the Broncos in Civic Center Park, Mayor Hancock out there, John Elway, Peyton Manning, all addressing fans. President Obama, by the way, just finishing a congratulatory phone call with Coach Kubiak and Demarcus Ware. Number seven sports director Lionel Bienvenu is back fresh from the Super Bowl and all the festivities today here with more. Well, Teresa, the rally after the parade was even bigger because Broncos fans who lined the parade route, well, they got in after the parade and walked right down to Civic Center Park. Take a look. Uh, the mayor just tweeted out over a million strong. So a million Broncos fans out there today? That's crazy. But wow, did Broncos country turn out in force after the parade? Broncos took the stage. Mrs. B with the Lombardi trophy. That one's for Pat. Derek Wolf holding it up, big part of that number one defense, raising the trophy for the fans. A keep to leave with a trophy and a cute little kid. Can't beat that. Then they address the orange masses with Mayor Michael Hancock getting the crowd going. Broco country, make some noise. I need some noise. Let the nation hear you. You are world champions. Make some noise. I did that intentionally. It's not about the Broncos. It's not about the Broncos. So hold the booze, hold all that stuff. It's not about the Broncos. It's about Sunday morning ought to be like that. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. I need, I need, I need to do that intentionally. Um, Sunday morning ought to be like that. And we don't get it when it comes to our worship and our praise, right? And so we reserve praise for our favorite team when they win. We reserve praise for our favorite singer, whatever the situation is, such that we break out the timbrel and we break out the drums and we break out the trumpet and we break out the dance and we break out all of that stuff when it comes to our favorite team, such that the mayor of our city becomes the worship leader. Make some noise! And we don't get that when it comes to our praise and celebration for God. And I'm venturing is because we really don't understand what it means to praise God and what it means to worship God. Are you get that? I mean, the thing that struck me about, about this scenario that we just saw on the screen, we had parents pull their kids from school um, and take them downtown so they could praise the Broncos. We had people, and it's not about the Broncos, like don't, don't, don't bash, the, don't do that. We had people calling sick from work, forced a Sabbath. <laughs> so they can go praise the Broncos. A million people. That's a third of the population of Denver, right? Metro, we don't have that many people in church on a Sunday morning combined. What is wrong? Who are we really serving? What are we really doing? And we come to church and we're reserve and conservative and all that good stuff. Nothing wrong with that, but I want us to kind of look at the text in front of us and get to where God would have. So before I do that, let me, if we can put the next slide on the screen. I want to give you some definition. Um, so here's the thing I want you all to understand. Praise should be the priority for the people of God. Come on, say praise. praise. Should be the priority, be the priority. For, the people of God. for the people of God. Uh, go to the next slide. Let me give you some definitions, then we're going to work. Oh, you can't barely see that. Let me read it to you. Uh, this is the English. This is, has nothing to do with Greek or Hebrew. English definition uh, of the word praise. In a noun form, it means an act of expressing approval or admiration or commendation or paying tribute to. Second thing it says, it could be an offering of grateful homage in a word or song as an act of worship. Don't miss it. This is English stuff or hymn of praise to God. It says it could be a state of being approved or admired, so on and so forth. And then in the verb form, it means to express approval or admiration or comment, to extol, to offer grateful homage to God or a deity 
as in words or song. Now, let me help you out with that before they change that real quick. This is English definition. So here's what that bottom one means as it looks to, as we relates to what we just saw on the screen. We've placed our favorite team in a position of deifying them, and we give them grateful homage in words or song. We even break out the trumpet, the timbrel, the cymbals, the high-sounding cymbals, and then the mayor said, let everything that has breath make some noise. And then the crowd said, yeah, right? You kind of get what I'm saying, right? Um, this past Super Bowl, my good friend, um, brother Troy, and I watched the game. Um, Troy was a North Carolina fan, and I was rooting for the Broncos because I live here, and I need my economy to do good. And um, so whenever the Broncos scored, I praised, and I cheered, and Troy sunk in his chair because his team was losing. He never said a hallelujah or none of that kind of stuff. Towards the back end of the game, when his team finally scored a touchdown, he got out of his chair and he erupted in praise. Yay! And I just simply said, too late, so on and so forth. <laughs> now, I'm pointing that out because we worship and praise God as if he's losing the game. <laughs> we sink in our chair. As if he's behind. I wish I had some. <laughs> you kind of get what I'm saying? But when our favorite team scores and win, doesn't matter whether we are emotive people or a person or not, man, we're the ones up cheering, rying, yelling, doing all that stuff because we know we are in front, okay? I think somewhere in a book somewhere it's written that we are more than what? Con yeah, you kind of get what I'm saying? That victory already belongs to us. So when we come to worship, man, we ought to come to worship with a completely different perspective and our mindset. And I don't know that we understand that. So go to the next definition. I want to give you, uh, well, before we do that, go to he, um, Psalms chapter 1, verse 50. And I'm just going to be quick. I just want to read this scripture and let it speak for itself. And we're going to allow God to move. So Psalms 150. Very, very short psalm, and then I'm going to read that, what's on the screen for you. If you're there, say amen. Let everybody get there. Psalms 150, and I want to read from uh, verses 1 through 6 so we can work this out and hear what God is saying to us this morning. If you're there, say amen. Look at what verse 1 says. It begins by saying, praise the Lord, and it says, praise him, praise God in his sanctuary, Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then verse 3 on down says, Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the sounding cymbals. Praise him with the loud sounding cymbals. And like Mayor Hancock just said in verse 6, but we're going to steal it back. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then it says praise the Lord. Okay. Let me read this. Let me read this. Then we're going to talk. Here's, here's the Hebrew now definition of the word praise based on what we just said. Notice what it begins. Um, it's from the Hebrew word halal and what it means to praise, to cheer, to brag on, I'm going to hang on to that phrase for a little while, to extol or to extol the greatness or excellence of a person, an object, or an event, to praise, to boast, to admire, to eulogize. That word eulogize simply means, it's a Greek term that means to speak well of, to exclaim hallelujah, to be praised, to be boastful, to be praiseworthy. Now, I need everybody to say this. Say boast about. God, you got to say with me, say boast about. boast about. If you don't leave and if you don't remember anything I said this morning, I want you to lock into this. You already know the other meaning of praise. But I want you to, to track and walk out of here knowing that when I praise God, I am boasting about God. Football season, you pick a barbershop, any barbershop, and people are boasting about their favorite team. 
What would it be like if the church were to face the world boasting about God? Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Come on, come on, talk to me this morning, right? What would that be like if we were really boasting about God because we know what God did and who God is? This, this psalm that we are about to look at, it's the last, one of the last, or the last psalm um, in the book of Psalm. And the last five psalms are what um, commentators and theologians refer to as the hallelujah psalms in that they begin and they end with praise the Lord. Most of us will, uh, we notice all day long that hallelujah is the highest praise. But when you look at that word praise, its root, at the root of the, the word is the word hallel. And that's where we get the word hallelujah from, which means to praise or to sing to um, the the highest praise to God. And, and that word hallel means to base. So when you really go to the root of the word itself, what hallelujah really means, boast about God. Okay, I want you all to hear me say that. Boast about God. So when I am praising God, I am boasting about God. I am talking about what he's done. I'm talking about his goodness. So when you read the last four Psalms, beginning in 146 all the way to 150, Here's what David is doing, and, and all throughout Psalm, Dave, you, David uses this word, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And a lot of us have read that on the surface, and all we've said is praise the Lord. But what David is really doing in the entire book of Psalms is he's boasting about God. God is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Come on. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though, I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with all, Lord Jesus. My cup runneth over because you're gyre, you keep providing. Surely goodness and mercy follows me what all the days of, and I shall dwell where? In the house of the Lord. I'm boasting about God. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, because his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditate there. Now he shall be, David said, like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season. His leaves therefore shall not wither whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind bloweth away. Therefore the ungodly shall perish but the righteous shall stand. Come on. He is boasting about God. And the entirety of the Psalms, yes, they're songs, but they're songs of boasting because of who God is and what God has done. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. Come on, are you with me? You can't shut him up. Because his team never loses. <laughs> Is this making sense? I want y'all to get this. I want y'all to get this. So he lays this foundation. So he ends this last psalm. And he's now trying to encourage us as believers in Christ that we must develop the attitude in worship, in praise, wherever we go, that we are constantly boasting about what? Come on, everybody say it. Say, boast about what? Boast about God. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, today I'm going to make praise a priority. Tell your other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, today I'm going to make praise a priority. Uh, come on, say, self, I'm going to make praise a priority. Psalms 50 is one of the shortest psalms in the entire book. Yes, 13 times in these six verses, David says, boast about God. Praise the Lord. Boast about God. Hallelujah. Talk about the goodness of God. Eulogize him, okay? And then he starts to lay out some foundations. So let me just walk through these three things because I want you all to put this into practice. Go to the next slide. I want to walk through this with you as we kind of see what God is saying here. So notice how he begins. The location of the praise. Because somebody's asking, where should I praise him, okay? Here's what we do. We only do it on Sunday morning. <laughs> Look at verse 1 of Psalms 50, 150. Notice how he begins. 
praise God where? In his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, okay? So notice this thing. God should be praised everywhere. Let me tell you what that means. So David opens up by saying to the Israelites, just like he's saying to us, the sanctuary of God has has several meanings. Number one, in the Old Testament, you will know whenever the Israelites travel with God, they had the Ark of the Covenant, and whenever the Ark of the Covenant was with them, it was significant or indicative of the truth that the presence of God was always with them. So what... The psalmist is trying to communicate to the Israelites in the Old Testament is that when we come together, there ought to be a level of corporate worship. Now, here's what you need to know about Old Testament theology. They did not have the church per se like we have the church today. Okay? So here's how this works. They didn't have constant access to God to go into the temple. So every now and then, maybe once a a week or whenever the time frame was, they would enter into the tabernacle, and that's where they would conduct their worship. That's where they conduct their praise, and that's where they would give honor and glory to God. So now, in the New Testament, there's this whole thing of the tabernacle still existing. But more importantly, here's what happened on Calvary when Jesus died. The veil of the temple, y'all notice, was rent in twain, okay? And so now when we accept Christ in our life as personal Lord and Savior, Jesus comes in and he takes residence in our life such that he lives within us permanently. So here's how he says it in the book of Corinthians now. Don't you know that when you accepted me in your life as personal Lord and Savior, that your body now has become what? The temple of what? The Holy Spirit which is in you, who, who, who you have, because you're not your own, you were bought with a price. So here's what I want you all to understand. The sanctuary now in the New Testament era is not restricted to the inside four perimeters of this wall. Matter of fact, the sanctuary is not even a building in the New Testament. Come on, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. The sanctuary is you. Oh, come on, y'all. So God dwells where? Yeah, you, you got to hear this. So here's what, let, let me help you with this real quick. Boast about God. Yeah. So can you see me in my car? Look like I'm talking to myself. What you doing, man? I'm boasting about God because that fool just cut me off and I knew it was God. Come on, that, that preserved me. Come on. I mean, now can you see me in my cubicle at work? Somebody got on my reserve nerve, and I'm, I'm talking, and I'm, I'm, what you doing? I'm boasting about God in the sanctuary because sanctuary is not location. Oh, I need at least two witnesses. It's wherever I am, I have something good. I am eulogizing. I am speaking about God. So in the earth realm, as believers in Christ, we are obligated to speak, to boast, to praise To make noise about God. Why we don't do it? We don't want to look crazy. (laughs) I'm going to get to this in a little while. The world did not save you, God did. Oh, come on, say amen. I'm going to get to that in a little while. Number one, I praise him in the sanctuary. Number two... It says, I praise him in the firmament, um, depending on your translations, and variant translations have different usage of that word. If you have a King James or an NASB, it says praise him in the firmament. If you have an NIV or an ESV, it says praise him um, in, in the heavens, I think is what it says, for his excellent, no, in the mighty heavens. Here's what that talks about, that word mighty. It's saying in his mighty power. And when we first started the series, here's what you should have seen. We had the throne sitting in the middle of the platform, and we had the angels sitting around the throne. And uh, you remember this, whenever the four living creatures would say, holy, 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 the elders around the throne would take off their throne and cast it at the feet of Jesus and say, you are worthy, O Lord. Y'all remember that, right? But here was the key about this. It says, day and night, they never stop saying Let me put this in context. They never stop boasting about God. The connection to sanctuary today, we ought to be just like those people in the angelic realm where our praise for God never stops. Oh, come on, come on. If the heavenly realm is praising him like that in the earth realm, we ought to replicate what's happening in heaven. Your kingdom become, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. So praise for us should never stop. Let me illustrate this. Back when I did that series, here's what I said. I don't have time to talk about you because I'm busy boasting about God. Come on now. I don't have time for you to get on my nerve because I'm busy boasting about God. Come on. I don't have time for stuff to get crazy because I am busy boasting about God. And if I put God first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything falls in line. But my problem is I stop boasting about God and I focus on what you're doing to me. And I stop my praise. <laughs> Boast about God in the sanctuary, just like it's happening in the heavenly realms. That's the where, okay? Put the second thing on the screen. And look at the next set of verses. I kind of walked through this. We're not going to be long, okay? Next one. Go to the next one real quick. I want you to see the why, okay? Here is the reason we should be boasting about God. Because of his, what's that phrase? Mighty what? Come on, if you don't have, if you don't have, I've seen, let me stick my illustration on the Broncos. I've seen more people walk around with Super Bowl 50 paraphernalia unashamedly. There's nothing wrong with that. They're proud of their team and they're boasting about their team. Why? Because of what their team did. Had, well, if you were to go to North Carolina right about now, <laughs> it's not too much boasting going on. You kind of get, because of what they did. The reason we boast about God is because of his mighty acts. Let's look at this. Let's look at this real quick. Verse 2. Praise him or boast about him for his what? Mighty deeds. And secondly, boast about him because of his what? Excellent greatness. Let me, let, me, let, me talk about, let me talk about the mighty deeds in three things. Creation, providence, and redemption. You, you've got to get this. Um, look at the creative ability of God. We take for granted that every morning we wake up, the sun is naturally going to be in place. Oh, come on. We take for granted that when the earth is dry, rains are naturally going to fall. Come on now. We take for granted that the wind is going to blow and that nature is going to do its thing. Here's the thing I need you to understand with me this morning. That is not happening happenstance. It is nobody but God who flung the stars and had them hang in the sky. Come on, you need to hear me this morning. It's nobody but God who clapped his hands and the earth was formed and causes the grass to grow. It is nobody but God because of his creative being, his creative power. Not only did he create, but he is still sustaining by the power of his will. Here is what I say. If God ceases to think about us just for one second, the world ceases to exist. He is sustaining me. He is sustaining you. He is sustaining the world by the power of his will, creative power. Secondly, the providential intervention of God. I like that. Let me tell you what that means. Here's what providence means. is that God has a way of taking all things and making it work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. There's no, nobody but a God that can take a person in their infancy or in their youth who used to sell drugs and ended up in jail. You think their life was over, but he has a way of cleaning them up. And next thing you know, they're a lawyer and they have a great job. Come on. Nobody but God, right? That, that when the doctor said, you, you should be dead and you're done, he has a way of taking that thing and healing you and confusing medical, come on, medicine, and then having you stand and talk about how great God is. He can take your mess up of yesterday and use it for your ministry to tomorrow to be a blessing to somebody else. That's the providential intervention of God. He is involved in our life and he takes our worst mistakes because of what he did, because of what he did. And then his redemptive thing. Listen, I said I was going to say this in a few minutes. You didn't save me. You don't have a heaven or hell to... I, you know. I 
Against all odds, I should be sentenced to hell. Come on. Against all odds, I shouldn't even be alive today. Against all odds, but nobody but God incarnated himself, took on the form of flesh, was born in a stable, came and died a cruel cross on the death of Calvary to save me from the pits of hell. I should have been the one on, well, forget me, you should have been the one on that cross, but for the grace of God. If that is not reason to boast about God, The worship leader shouldn't even have to say, raise your hand, because you walk up in here like this. The worship leader shouldn't even have to say, open up your mouth. You just come in here, and if you have the gift of tongues or speaking, whatever your gift is, you just, hallelujah! I mean, nobody stops you, listen to me, because of what he did. I'm not going to even talk about what he's going to do. But if that, I, I need, come on, two witnesses here that don't mind boasting about God. Are you hearing me? David says, David says, David says, it says here, look what he says. He says, because of his mighty deeds, and I like about the next one, because of his excellent greatness. I, I oftentimes tell people, don't trust me. I am human. I'll fail you. I'm an imperfect, fleshly being. Don't make me God. Now, God, you don't make him God. He is God. <laughs> so here's his greatness. He can't lie. He can't fail you. Come on. He, he, he loves unconditionally. Come on. He is merciful. He is gracious. He is kind. He is all of that. When I think about his excellent greatness, he, 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 he existed before. He is the Alpha and the Omega. If that is not enough for me to boast about him, I don't know what is. So David says, think about who he is. Think about his excellent greatness. And he says, boast about him there. So listen, in your worship, you don't, you don't even have to like the song. All you got to do is like God. Yeah, like God. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of get what I'm saying? And then, and then, and then here's the thing. This is going to sound, let me, say, let me just say, here's what you're doing in worship and in praise is you're boasting about God. You're, you're boasting about God. I'm standing in the presence of God boasting about him. And, 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 and then check this out, and, and, and I wish you can do the work on, on the word. If you were to look on that word Hallel again throughout Psalms, listen to what it says. It says it's used the majority of the time in the plural sense. Let me tell you what that means. It's not one person boasting about God, but the implication in the text is in congregational worship. The reason I like the video I showed you so much, that's my dream for the church. A million people, right? Imagine pandemonium. I mean, imagine Civic Center. Y'all not hearing me. That's why I keep telling you, this place isn't big enough. And, and, and for what God wants done, because when we get a vision of what boasting about God is, he rains down blessings and he rains down healing and he rains down the miraculous and he rains down all that stuff because we put him where he rightfully belongs as a congregation of people. Imagine worship like that. Now, if he hadn't done anything for you, you don't have anything to say. But if I'm right about this, I'm pretty sure he's done something. <laughs> I don't think there's any person in here can say that God has not. Come on. Do I have any witness in here that can say that God has not? He's done something for you. So we talked about the where. We talked about the why. Let me show you. Put the third one on the screen, and I want to read this real quick. I want to read this with you, and I want you all to see how or, or what's the instrument that we should praise God is. And I'm just going to read this and let us talk. Let it talk. In addition to us using our voices, which is a natural part, look at what David says. Everything 
that we've got. I need to take you all on a mission trip to Africa where there's no keyboards and there's no drums and there's no guitar and there's no bass. And to watch people praise him, just y'all not hearing me. Everything they've got, if they can hit it, if they can, y'all not hearing me. And, and I'm not talking out of whack stuff. I'm talking synchronously in tune, melodic praise for God. With, with, if they can sit on it, if they can stand it, they will use whatever they can to praise God. And because we don't understand this, we come to church on Sunday. It's too loud. <laughs> we don't need all that. I'll never forget as a child I got put out of a church for having a drum in the church. Can you believe that? It's a long time ago. Now the church that I got put out for having drums in the church has drums in the church. But, but to show you how far we've come because we don't understand what David is saying. If God has done anything for you. Let me just read this and then I'm almost done. Praise him with the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and the dance. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the sounding or the high sounding cymbal. Praise him on the loud crashing cymbals. If you got it, use it <laughs> to boast about God. Are you hearing me this morning? Come on, David. Come on, worship team. I want to do this last thing. If you've got it, use it to boast about God. God, okay? Now, now look at the last thing and I'm done. Who should be boasting about God? Put the last one up there, okay? Say everything that has breath. Come on again. Say everything that has breath. Here is how Matthew says it. Consider the lily of the field. They neither toil nor spin. Consider the birds. Yet your heavenly father takes care of them. I happen to live out in the wilderness where there's open fields. And it's the most beautiful sound in the morning to wake up and hear the birds worship. Because they are sensible enough to know who's taking care of them. And they have breath. God created. You kind of get what I'm saying. The most beautiful things to hear the lions roar and all the animals give praise to God. Now, here's the, 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 the distinct thing about you and I. None of those things are created in the image of God. They're just praising to praise. God didn't even ask them. But you and me, who he breathed into our nostrils... His breath of life. Who else is most qualified to exhale praises to him? Come on, come on. Scripture talks about God inhabits the praise of his people. The, the one way we can bless God the most is when you and I, people who are created in his image, people who are created in his likeness, can use our breath in the most effective way to boast about him. But here's what we do. As opposed to boasting about him, we use our breath to say his name in vain. To do all kinds of crazy stuff. And God is saying, we need to get back to the place where we understand the priority of praise. And praise becomes a priority for the people of God. Next time you're engaged in a dispute, imagine taking a moment to boast about God. Imagine taking a moment to offer God praise, to offer him glory. To just worship him. And do like David in the Psalms. Boast about God. Are you hearing me this morning? 
as we've been talking about worship for a long time. We did this entire series on worship and didn't even mention the song. Because before we can get to the song, we need a relationship with God. This is not an indictment on anybody's favorite music or worship style. The reason we can't sing the right song is because we're not focused on what the song is saying. We're focused about how the song makes us feel. And if we don't feel what fits our cultural preference, we can't boast about God. Here's the reason. It ain't doing nothing for me. Well, heck, we're not boasting about you. <laughs> we're boasting about God. When I was a child, you and when was it? Bring that up a little bit. I remember we would sing these old hymns. Y'all remember that? And then we would just boast about God. Every Sunday. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Boasting about Him. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. songs, they had meanings. The word said some. Can you remember that? Hallelujah, thine the glory. Y'all know that? Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. We praise thee, O God. For the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Reva. Come on. That's boasting about God. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem. And crown him, Lord. It's oh. boasting about God. That's, that's boasting about God, right? That's boasting about God. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. I want us to do something a little different. And just take a moment just to boast about God. Just a moment. He deserves our praise. We've got the best drums and the best keys and the best guitars and the best singers. Come on, are you with me? Can you see the day when we get to heaven? You thought that Bronco Parade was something. <laughs> see, that's what next Sunday is all about. That triumphal entry when the parade was set with the king of kings sitting on that mule. And all of Jerusalem is boasting about the greatness of God and celebrating God and giving him glory for who he is because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the great I am. He is the I am that I am. He, he is the alpha and the omega. And because of that, we boast about him. We boast about him. We boast about him. Because we're going to allow everything that has breath to praise the Lord. Come on, open your mouth and tell God how much you love him. Come on, minister David. Just